the jury awards are decided by jury decisions alone. This year we have three jury award winners. for short film goes to the Sun Devil and the Princess. Oh yeah, I was the, I was the Sun Devil. <laughs> anyway, I uh, just wanted to say thank you at, uh, on behalf of Stephen Iram Louie, who's a great neck. Guy, who's, who's from Great Neck in here? Great Neck stand up, he's a great neck, great neck boy. Okay, no one from Great Neck. But anyway, he's a Long Island boy, okay? And uh, so am I, I'm from Hempstead. So I uh, wanted to say thank you on behalf of the cast and crew, on behalf of the filmmaker. Um, and he wanted me to let you know also that this is actually a shorter version of a longer feature. I read the feature, the script is phenomenal. Um, and he also wanted to know if he wanted, wanted to, me to let you know. If you want to know more about the film and what's going on, go to Sun Devil the Film or SunDevilFilm.com. Hope I got it right. But anyway, thank you very much. I'm sure you'd like to also thank his mother and father. God bless you. Now the jury award for the best documentary. is unique. It's a pressure cooker. the jury of the Long Island Independent Film Expo. I can't begin to tell you how much this means to us and to VSV. I was a simple girl growing up in Orange, New Jersey. <laughs> East Orange in the house, 280. <laughs> and uh, I never saw myself being a filmmaker. Um, I started out as an actress and then all of a sudden I wanted to tell really great stories that resonate, that raise the human spirit. So for this jury to recognize this and recognize the goodness and how some of the most desolate areas can still have hope, thank you so much. I also want to thank my producers because without them, I am nothing. I am a basket case. <laughs> so thank you to the jury. We really appreciate this and this is for BSV. <laughs> thank you. Maria, thank you for uh, having faith in me. When I, uh, I met uh, BSV about five years ago, and um, Maria and I decided immediately we didn't want to do a typical film about a bunch of black kids dancing in the neighborhood that want to use their dancing skills to go to Beverly Hills, to South Beach. BSV wants to stay in Bed-Stuy, and they want to take their success and keep it in the neighborhood to enhance the lives of people. They know what it's like. I've talked to the guys for five years and 
with the situation recently, the last few years, with Trayvon Martin and Michael Brown, it happens more frequently in places like Bed-Stuy, and they know about this. This is what they want to try to prevent, and this is why we did this film, to show people just exactly what these talented young men are. Uh, this woman brought it out. I just co-wrote it with her. She brought it out. Everything, everything give it up for Maria. And, uh, and, uh, Yes, she's from Orange. I'm from Bluefield, New Jersey. So, and God bless Long Island. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Okay, and the last jury award goes to a student film. for us to make since especially because we're so young and we were in school we didn't have any money so we had to do a lot to get that money to get this movie made uh, John Amos I can't believe you're here right now but that's that's really awesome uh, <laughs> and I, I'd like to uh, also dedicate this film to my brother because uh, last year he passed away while this film was being made and this film is in a way for him and he gave me the power and the energy to finish the film while it was in post-production. So, this one's for you. Keep it going for both of them, y'all. Keep it going for both of them. Give it up to Sandy. She's on with the incredible resume. And Sandy, you invited John Amos, and you invited a bunch of people. You did, I'm coming too. I want to come. I want to come talk to the kids too, man. Children are our future. And the young fella that just won. Isn't he cute? <laughs> so young and naive. He said, because we're in school and we're so young, we didn't have any money. So naive, because when you get old and get out of school, you still ain't going to have no money. <laughs> ain't a bunch of bubble, but it's hard to get money when you're in film business. But good luck to you, and keep dreaming, young man. Keep dreaming and keep telling great stories, man. This is, this is great. This is great. All right, so this next guy, this next guy that I'm about to introduce, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little preamble before I introduce him, because I wanted to meet this guy. So just an aside, I, I created this thing called The One Joke Wonder, okay? As a stand-up comic for, well, I opened this comedy club in Harlem back in 1989. I probably was still in college. I was as young as that young fella that thinks he's gonna have money when he gets uh... <laughs> So I created this, this, I created this comedy club on 125th Street at this little place called the National Black Theater, right? In, in Harlem. And uh, it was just basically a, a weekly comedy show that allowed young urban comedians to perform in front of an urban audience. And this was 1989, we did our first show, Easter Sunday. 
And from then, 26 years ago, comics like, comics who, who I managed, who were in my first workshops, were guys like Tracy Morgan, guys like Bill Bellamy, guys like Mike Epps, guys like Jim Brewer from Long Island, as a matter of fact. But uh, all went on to huge, amazing success. We didn't even know it was possible to find that kind of success in comedy back then. So uh, now, after being in the business for about 26 years, I realized that audiences are very savvy as far as comedy goes. And a lot of y'all are closet comedians, okay? A lot of y'all are very funny. And, but y'all don't want to quit your day job to, to start the grind of a comedy career. So I created this contest, this game show, comedy game show called The One Joke Wonder. I trademarked the name. I, I website, onejokewonder.com. I, I had some trophies made and overseas were designed overseas and it takes a month for them to ship them by freighter. Like this is a huge thing. I'm shopping it as a, as a TV series and a web series and everything you could think of, right? And since it's something called a one joke wonder, it's basically a contest where everybody from the audience, no professional comedians, but you can come up and just tell one joke. Old joke, new joke, dirty joke, clean joke, joke you got off the internet, joke you heard on, on TV. Just come up and tell one joke and the funniest person of the night wins this trophy, right? And I said, I need to find somebody who represents this concept, who represents this thing called the one joke wonder, who can really relate to align myself with. And I thought of this one name. And I said to myself, he's probably so busy, I will never get a chance to get to him. And then I come to host Long Island Film Expo, and I'm about to introduce this dude right now. <laughs> I wanted to get to this guy for so long. And he's about to come up here, right? This is crazy. So let me read his intro. Now that I did my aside. But you know I'm trying to do some business with you, sir, so uh, let's go, let's go. So our next presenter is the former head writer for the Howard Stern radio and television show. He's an award-winning comedy. His award-winning, he was in the award-winning comedy documentary, The Aristocrats, and featured, in fact, he got beat up in Fred Carpenter's masterpiece, Send No Flowers. <laughs> he also just rapped on Deborah Markowitz's film, By Blood, called By Blood. Please welcome the guy I've been trying to chase down for six months. Give it up for Mr. Jackie Martin. Woo! Oh, Jackie, you're so big. Woo! I can't believe he's here. Woo! Nice shot of applause for Kevin. He's doing a great job. Woo! I'm keeping with tradition. I guess we got to thank his mama. Uh, I would like to, first of all, thank the Long Island uh, International Film Expo for my award. I don't know if you can see it. It's, like, uh, it's gonna get me like two Celsius later. <laughs> How you doing, Hans? All the talk about you and your president sleeping together. Remember the good old days when you weren't sleeping? Yeah. <laughs> Guy says to his wife, honey, how about it? She says, not tonight, I got a headache. Next night he says to her, hey, honey, how about it? She says, not tonight, I don't feel good. Next night he says to his wife, how about it? She says, three nights in a row, what are you, a sex maniac? <laughs> Here's one you can take home. This is for your kids, your grandparents, your rabbi, priest, tell it to anybody. So stupid, so clean, so funny. <laughs> I know the end. <laughs> Two blondes are out to lunch. And the first blonde says to the second blonde, You got something on your cheek? The other blonde goes like this. She says, No, the other side. She goes, Can <laughs> 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 we do one dirty one? Oh, yeah. yeah. Guy says to a girl, give me a blowjob. She says, be more romantic. He says, give me a blowjob in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> the 
this is a great event. It's always been a great event. And uh, I love being here. And Deb, you do a great job. And I think Kevin should be here every year. He's fantastic. It's just great. The whole thing is fun. The gold pass holder has entree into every film block in the Long Island International Film Expo. If you have the gold pass, you can see every movie, every single movie. Because the amount of movies they see, they have a chance to pick their favorite films. The film most chosen by the most will be the winner of the Gold Pass Award. The video of the Gold Pass Award is played. Now. Weather. 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 Weather tomorrow. Weather tomorrow. Weather tomorrow. Weather. Weather. Weather tomorrow. Weather, weather. Weather. Sports event. Sports event. Sports event. Sports event. Sports event. Player salaries. Players salaries. Players player salaries. Player salaries. Player salaries. Sports event. And the winner of the Gold Pass Award goes to Chit Chat. Let's hear it. Come on. No Chit Chat. You can keep that. Want to get younger? <laughs> <laughs> you can't put me in front of a sea of faces and put lights on me and not expect me to tell jokes. <laughs> the guy goes for a job interview. <laughs> the guy goes for a job interview and the interviewer says, what do you think is your biggest fault? The guy says, I think my biggest fault is my honesty. The interviewer says, I don't think honesty is a fault. The guy says, I don't give a fuck what you think. <laughs> The wife's on the deck drinking a glass of wine. The wife's on the deck drinking a glass of wine. Husband comes out with the newspaper, sits down and starts to read. She says, I love you. I love you so much. I don't think I can make it through a day without you. He puts down the newspaper. Says, is that you talking or is that the wine talking? It's me talking to the wine. <laughs> Whether they're the unsung, quiet balance board of a main character, the visceral antagonist who sets in motion a chain of events, or somewhere in between, some of the greatest and most essential performances for a film is a supporting character who not only helps anchor the story, but the lead actors and their work as well. before she died. We kept each other company. She told me everything she could remember. About what? Oh, about life. I remember our father, a stocky plumber from Surrey who had five children spread across two families and student government at the university, protesting and making these giant colorful banners to end injustices. And then Thomas, my sweet Thomas, The award for Best Supporting Actress goes to Hannah Jane McMurray for Helena. Woo! Wait a minute. I know. <laughs> uh, Hannah Jane is in a tour of Peter Pan right now, uh, so I will be honored to accept this on her behalf. She's not really British. She's playing Captain Hook. <laughs> so a guy with a Dobin pincher and a guy with a chihuahua are standing there and the guy with a Dobin pincher says, let's go to the restaurant and get something to eat. 
Guy with Chihuahua says, we can't get in there. We got our dogs with us. The guy with the Dolman bitch says, follow my lead. Goes to the restaurant before he goes up to the door. He puts on a pair of dark glasses. <laughs> guy at the door says, I'm sorry, sir. No pets allowed. Do you understand? It's my seeing eye dog. The Dolman pitcher? Oh, yeah, they're using them now. They're excellent. Hey, come on in. This is the guy with Chihuahua figures, what the hell? He puts on a pair of dark glasses. <laughs> the guy at the door says, I'm sorry, sir. No pets allowed. Do you understand? It's my seeing eye dog. He says, a chihuahua? He says, they gave me a chihuahua? <laughs> old, couples in the, old couple's in the living room. The wife turns to her husband. She says, let's go upstairs and fuck. He says, I, I don't know if I can do both. <laughs> Supporting act. <laughs> I never wanted any of this to happen. Everything just became too much. I pushed everybody away including you. Since your mum died, my rose, I just have been... I wanted to tell you. I'm up. For that mum found out she had cancer. How could I see? for Crossroads. generous man I've ever met. And yeah, I'm happy to be here on his behalf. Thank you so much. walks in her daughter's bedroom. <laughs> her daughter's using a vibrator. She says, honey, what are you doing? She says, Mom, I'm 40 years old. I don't even have a boyfriend. Just my husband. <laughs> and so her father walks in. She's using a vibrator. Honey, what are you doing? She says, Daddy, I'm 40 years old. I don't even have a boyfriend. I'll never get married. That's my husband. The next day, the wife and the daughter go out shopping. They come back a few hours later. They walk in the kitchen. The old man's standing there. He's got a martini in one hand. He's got the vibrator buzzing away in his ass. His wife says, what are you doing? He says, I'm having a drink with my new son-in-law. <laughs> Wife. Hey, babe. <laughs> Not tonight. I'm going to the gynecologist tomorrow and I want to be fresh. <laughs> he said, You're not going to the dentist, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
I'm all out. I'd have to start from the beginning. If the director is the coach, then the lead actor in a film is his quarterback and has the duty of not only carrying out the plays on the field, but also working with the team and his fellow actors and crew and being in control of the story. Best actress. What's this, the bodybuilder? Ah, uh, some superhero. My goodness. It has huge equipment. Wow. Hey, can I have that back, please? Well, at least he's excited to see me. <laughs> hey, give me that. Hey, Mary, it's me, it's Michael. I didn't want you to mess it up. I have to sell it. Sally Kirkland. Um, she, Kirkland. Kirkland. And uh, she's actually um, in London right now um, playing in Peter Pan. And, uh, yeah, I stole a joke. So uh, just uh, Sally isn't here, but uh, she said to thank, and it was an honor to work with Sally. Oh, I'm the producer of the film. And we cried on set, we laughed, and it was uh, a beautiful opportunity to work with her. So thank you. actor in a feature film. but uh, uh, this is probably uh, so important for me. Uh, I've, I've, yeah. When I was a teenager, my, my grandfather uh, told me, Jesus, do whatever you want, but do it 100%. So um, I quit, I, well, I quit uh, industrial engineering uh, to become an actor. And uh, thanks to him, now I'm a very happy actor instead of a sad engineer. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I want to dedicate this, of course, uh, to my grandfather, but uh, also to my mother. Uh, so, muchas gracias, mamá, te quiero. And, uh, yeah, in, well, in a film, um, uh, there's so many, so many, I mean, so many people that work for a film, and this, uh, this is uh, for all the crew because, uh, you know, uh, you know, film is a, a group effort, so and they've worked very hard for the, for for day release. So uh, thank you to all the crew, and uh, and yeah, thank you all. Uh, I love you, <laughs> and I'm very happy to be here. I will always remember um, Long Island. Uh, this is my first award ever. So. Yeah. 